Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us at the Market Site studio in Times Square, New York City, we have Fausto Puglisi, president of Cyber Trading University, to discuss using NASDAQ Book Viewer to trade in a down market as well as breakouts. Fausto, it's great to see you as always. Welcome back to Trade Talks. And I enjoy going over this with you because you're looking specifically at price and volume, and there's nothing more concrete than that. Had a couple of high flyer earnings this week, some big names. We sure did. We had a lot of them. We had it with PLTR. We had it with uh, NVIDIA yesterday. And obviously, there's been a lot of good action I want to share with on the, on the NASDAQ book viewer. All right. And let's take a look at that. One thing I want to ask, when you look at Palantir, and it's climbing, how do you determine where those resistance levels are? You see, a lot of this, uh, Jill, a lot of people that trade in the market, they just keep looking and, and don't understand where the resistance levels are. So they look at these charts. The big thing about being a good trader is you have to have a game plan, and a lot of people don't look at that. So when you look at PLTR, you could see that it's, it's breaking out, it's moving up pretty nicely. And then when we go to the next slide, you'll notice it's having a very tough resistance level getting past this 1150. So everyone's thinking like, should I hold on? Should I get out? And you can go back and look at history and what's happening that history is not always you know indicative of the future so you have to look at at the book viewer and say okay where are those waters and when you go to the book viewer you'll notice that um on the next slide that the stock had a really big what we call iceberg orders a big major major order right around that 12 dollars and it was hovering there and hovering there over and over again and that's what really helps you when you trade in today's markets because it shows you the future using the Nasdaq Book Viewer. Right. And we can see there, there's what that execution was. Right. Now, if you look at notice on the next slide where it talks about and you see all those green, little, those, uh, which is called the time and sales window, those are the executions that where, where the chart gets its data from. These are called breakouts. And everybody wants to know, like, did I get out of a position too soon or is it going to run up? Listen, Jill, you could always buy back a stock. The traders have to look at that. But by knowing where that resistance level is, you'll see those orders. But those orders can get executed. And by the way, Jill, those are real orders. A lot of people look at them. People look at it. Are they fake orders, real orders? We all know you can't put a live order out there, your real, uh, a fake order out there in the market. So they are real. But the big thing is if they get executed, you could see that on the time in sales, which is another window a lot of people take, don't take advantage of. So the next question is, of course, where's the new support? Well, what happens is that when you break through that resistance level, that resistance level becomes a new support level. I kind of use the metaphor of like we're in a building. You have floors and ceilings. When you break through a ceiling, guess what? You're standing on that ceiling. That is the floor. And that's why you'll see on that slide that it was always having a tough time getting below that $12, um, uh, support, uh, that $12 price level because that resistance now becomes a support. Let's move on and talk about Upstart. So Upstart, same thing. You have a great runner up and no one realizes where that resistance level is. So you're looking at it, you have a good profit, good intraday, which lead maybe into a swing trade, maybe to an investment, you know, but you have to look at it and say, okay, well, where is the street reacting? Because not what you think, it's what the book for you is gonna show you where those orders are. That's where we could see it right here. And you could see that right there, that Jill, there was a 90,000 share order right there at 25, 25. And you know, that is, and if you look at all the orders on the book viewer, out of everything, that's almost like 100 times more of the average order out there. And the other thing that's very attractive about it is that you only have three orders. See, the book viewer, too, you have to understand that you have to learn how to customize it. You know, there are features on there that are going into detail, like just fill, you know, setting up the, um, the filters and, you know, all those, you know, the columns, how it is. So you don't have all of them, but those columns right there are very, very critical when it comes to seeing who's out there. Right, and then of course we get our new level of support. Right, like I always tell you, you could always take, you could always buy it back, Jill, and that's people have to look at it. And there you have an example of how the stock did break out that resistance level, and then all of a sudden, look, the stock took a big, big run up right there. And like I said, just like PLTR, that resistance level becomes a new support level. All right, let's talk about the banks for a moment here. PacWest. Yeah, well, the banks have been a lot of fun lately. So, um, so anyway, you see how this, a lot of them took big, big hits, but sometimes they do come back and you know and you like want to know where are the big buyers where are they pushing up and when you look at the pack west you'll notice that pack west had a major major resistance level um right around that price around what is that six dollars and 66 cents how appropriate right, right would you think <laughs> uh, and right there over you could see over the time it kept hitting it it, it, it backed off it hit it backed off some people might look at that and say, oh, it's a double top, a triple bottom, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, it's a 160,000 share seller out there, 16,000 share seller. 
Right, and then you get to your iceberg order, of course. Right, and then what ends up happening here is that this is not only just a breakout, but someone added to their order. So this is somebody that is obviously adding to that position. And now you have not only uh, have that 116,000 share buyer, but now he upticked it to 182. Remember, you have to realize that everybody around the world trades on the NASDAQ market. There are multiple orders out there. So that's not just one person. It could be several different people. So sometimes people look at it and say, you know what? I like the stock. Maybe someone else wants to jump in it. And that's what also drives that stock a lot higher. And this goes on with every stock. Right. All right. And Tesla, buyers driving the stock price up. I know it's cheesy. Yeah. Well, but you know what? It, 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 what's incredible uh, that it does, it works on every single stock. Some people look at it, which, you know, I'm a little bit a fan of inexpensive stocks because less risk, risk, more reward. But they do it on Tesla too. So Tesla, you could see it in pre-market, had a, it was on a downtrend, and then it hit a real big major support level right at 164. And what was key there, if you look at it, there is literally a, was that, a 67,000 share buyer and a 200,000 share buyer, Jill, right there at that, was at 165. Guess what? That's not, that's not chump change. No yeah. one's dumping out 200,000 shares out there. And what happened when it hit that big buyer? Boom, the stock took off. All right, and fortuitous timing, right? NVIDIA, I mean, that's the only story out there today. So NVIDIA, like everyone was looking at it. I mean, listen, NVIDIA had a really big run. Great earnings. We all know about the AI story and everything else that did a number one chip out there, that, that, you know, the video car that really runs it. So anyway, they had great earnings, and all of a sudden, the stock took off. Now, the question is, is it too late to buy it? Listen, regardless of the stock being up, how much it was, over 25% or something like that. Is this, this chart is from after the close? What's the timing of this? So this chart is actually from this morning. Okay. Okay, it's from this morning. So I, I was so excited I had to show it to you because what was nice about this stock right here is that there was a major, major resistance level around 400. I was a little too late to get a little screenshot on the book viewer, but there actually was a 400,000, 300,000 share seller at 400. Now, if you do the math, how much money is that? That's over about $120 million worth right. of stock out there. But what you, if you notice right here on this slide, on the book viewer, a couple of things I want to point out that other people don't realize. You could also use the filters, and you could eliminate all the hundreds and twenties. So what I did here is I said, you know what, show me everything here um, with 2,000 shares. And you'll notice it kind of aggregates and brings down those numbers. And on the offer, you'll notice that you have two big orders. You have a 55,000 share seller, and that is 1,619 orders. And you had another 1,780 orders out there at uh, 100,000 shares at 390. Now, when you draw the trend line, you'll see that those resistance levels and those support levels, how they make a building effect. So remember, those orders are out there. That means somebody owns them at those prices. So you just got to have that game plan and know where you are. So the key to being a very good trader is always having a game plan, Jill. And that's a lot of traders have the mistake. When you go out there and you look at a trade, you got to say, okay, you see those orders out in the book viewer. You know they're out there. You see big block orders out there. And you just have to know where to place those limit orders to get out where they're out. You know, it's really interesting, speaking of having a game plan, uh, there was somebody who was on a financial network earlier today. She got out of NVIDIA yesterday, but she's like, I was up 100% on my trade. Like, and she just stuck to her methodology. And All right, fine, you know, you missed a little bit of the action here, but you know, you have to stick to that plan and be consistent. Because it's, one, you know, one trade is one thing, but when you do it over a course of years and you stay in the game, well, good traders, Jill, right. we always say, you can't go broke taking a profit. That's right. an old saying traders say. But the thing is, um, how do you know you didn't? It, you, listen, it's never too late. You made money. That's the key right. part of that. So you can't argue that you took a loss. Listen, you could always buy it back. Most More times than others, you're better off taking the profit right. than holding on to it. It's great. And nobody could predict it. You know, listen, we all, if we all knew that they would have great earnings, we wouldn't be standing here today. We'd exactly. tell everybody. We'd be celebrating. We'd be celebrating. But... The big thing is, but when you use that book viewer and you have that tool, you have that keep a platform out there, it lets you see more or less the future of seeing where those orders are out there. So it gives you more of a game plan. Where is the street reacting to it? And that's what today's traders have to look at. And that's why it's so important to have it. All right, Pastor. I appreciate the insight as always. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. And thanks for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.